Why did we need this extra step here? Remember that in the Clayson condensation, the, um, the last step would be that after this ethoxide leaves, the ethoxide would then deprotonate the alpha carbon. So mm -hmm. to keep the alpha carbon protonated, you need an extra step where you add acid to protonate it. That's a technicality. Well then, what do we need to do to get from here to here? Just add heat. And what would that do? Uh, it would uh, decarboxylate. Now what is the precondition for a decarboxylation? What do you need for a decarboxylation? Uh, a beta, you, need a, you need a carbon new on the beta carbon. Now the full slogan is we need a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid. Oh, okay. So we got well first we got to uh, hydro, uh, do a hydrolysis. That's right. So you're, you've memorized one half of the slogan, but we need the other half too. We can't do a decarboxylation unless we have a carboxyl group. Okay. So we need a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid. So we need to do a hydrolysis, but what reagents could we add to do the hydrolysis? Water. And either acid or base. Hydrolysis has to be acid or base catalyzed. We could do this whole thing in one step if we just added hot H3O+, but for some reason your instructor likes to do the base catalyzed version. So your instructor writes it like this. They do a base so you wouldn't, have got, you wouldn't have gotten it from adding that water and that hydrochloric acid <coughs> right there over the arrow? That's just going to protonate it and that, that's not going to... Ah, you know, that's a good point too. Uh, I don't know why this doesn't do the hydrolysis. That's an excellent <coughs> point. Uh, maybe uh, for some reason this is not added, uh, you know, that, that makes perfect, that, that's a good catch. I don't know why this doesn't do the hydrolysis. Maybe, uh, yeah, I really don't know. It seems like the, your instructor is really overcomplicating things here. Um, it seems like at this point you could just uh, add hot H3O plus, and then that would take care of everything right there. Yeah. I don't really know what. Uh, in fact, so uh, this should already be a carboxylic acid here, but that's not how it's drawn here in the notes. But uh, that seems like a good point to me. Um, of course, you could say that about any uh, Clayson condensation. We, we always follow it up with H3O plus, and, and we never assume that that's going to do a uh, hydrolysis. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is actually. Well, I, I guess one thing you should say is hydrolysis is kind of an equilibrium reaction. So um, in order to, to to get the full hydrolysis, you usually have to be taking out the products to hold the equilibrium in the direction that you want. So if we're uh, if we're not uh, pulling the equilibrium in the direction that we want, we still get a lot of this ester. Anyway, I'll show you how your instructor wrote it, because okay. that's probably how you see it on the test. Okay. But there, there does seem to be some shortcuts we could take here. So your instructor did sodium hydroxide and water. And then they added H2O and HCl again. And yeah, they really seem to be overcomplicating things. <laughs> So that would give us this. Um, so we would have a hydrolysis that gives us a carboxylate, and then this would protonate it. And then, if they add heat, that'll take us to here. Now the sodium hydroxide, exactly, without showing the whole mechanism, what is that initiating there as far as a? That's a normal nucleophilic okay. addition elimination. Okay. First, we're going to unform the carbonyl. And then when we reform the carbonyl, we're going to kick off the leaving group. Now, like you said, it seems like we could just as well have done that over here under acid catalyzed conditions. Uh, but that's for some reason that's not how your instructor is showing it. So I guess we might as well see it the way your instructor is showing it. Okay. Um, but anyway, that takes us back to here. Now, um, it, it seems like we could just at this point just say H3O plus and heat, and that by itself should take us all the way to here. But your instructor doesn't okay. seem to write it that way. All right. Well, this is definitely a problem you want to mark and try to go back through again. Uh, I know this seems hard, but this is a pretty standard type of problem. So one thing to keep in mind is that we can use Clayson condensations to make ketones. Uh, we can make, and we can make, this is a way to make ketones out of carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. Okay. Because even, uh, we know the Clayson condensation only works on esters. But we can easily make other carboxylic acids and acid derivatives into esters. Here we started with a carboxylic acid, but it was very easy to use esterification to make it into an ester. And then we can use the Clayson condensation to change the ester into a ketone, a ketone with more carbons. This is a ketone with more carbons than we started. 
I think this was pretty tough, but the things that I think made it much simpler, that, so the things that you did was that you put in these numbers. That was good, although we might as well number this carbon too. What you maybe not didn't do is put in the alpha and the asterisks. I think that really helps us to, to identify the two fragments that we need to attack each other in the Clayson condensation, but, but this is just tough. It takes practice. And only for ketones. Pardon? It just makes ketones. Well, if you do the Clayson condensation and then you do hydrolysis and decarboxylation, that makes a ketone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If but you just do the Clayson condensation without all that extra stuff, then it gives you a beta, a beta carbonyl ester. Okay. Well, that's where uh, hopefully now we've got the basics um, and now you can do a bunch of uh, homework practice problems because definitely that's definitely something that takes practice and looking at the answer here. Now we're going to learn how to do this synthesis. It's actually, actually, I guess this seems like the, pretty much the same thing we were talking about. So again, we're going to see how we, well, uh, uh, no, I guess, um, so we're going to see how we can turn this 1,3-dicarbonyl into these ketones. So actually, this is a continuation of what we were talking about before. Now, where would we get something like this? What type of reaction would make this? Well, this is what we get from a Clayson condensation, right? And this is what we get from a Clayson condensation. When one ester attacks another ester in a Clayson condensation, one of the ester groups survives and one gets turned into a ketone. So this is what we would get from a Clayson condensation. And now we want to learn what we can do with this. Well, we actually already kind of saw that. What we can do with this is um, we can hydrolyze uh, this and then decarboxylate so that all we're left with is the ketone. Now this is what's going to be called the acetoacetic ester synthesis. You actually saw a video or, that talked about that. Uh, but there was only one or two examples there, so and this is difficult, so we'll try to go through some more examples. Do you remember watching that video on the acido? Did you watch all those videos? Yeah. Okay, but maybe don't have too clear a recollection. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, mean, I might not. Right. I, 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 uh, once we start working through it, I'll okay. probably recognize it. But the acido is that how it's referred to in the videos? Yes, although there was a kind of comical interlude where I spent ten minutes trying to figure out why this name makes yes, sense. Yes, I remember that. Ah, yeah, I now you remember. I spent 10 minutes trying to figure out why the name makes sense, and finally the students figured it out instead. Yeah. All right, so let's see if I can remember what the students figured out. Well, what does asset mean? How many carbons does asset mean? Two. Right. So um, this is called, so this acetic refers to these two carbons. This acetic refers to these two carbons, and this aceto refers to these two carbons. To be specific, we could call it an ethyl acetoacetic ester synthesis, because there's also an ethyl group here, but that's usually left out. It doesn't really matter what this group is over here anyway. All right, so anyway, that's where those, those, uh, those names are coming in. This set of two carbons and this set of two carbons. That's not too important, but that's what it's called. Now, actually, in a sense, we've already learned how to do this. Mm -hmm. How would we go from here to here? Well, we could do it with uh, water and um, acid and heat. Right. Basically, we need to hydrolyze this into a carboxylic acid, and then the heat will decarboxylate it. We know that your instructor, for some reason, prefers doing a base-catalyzed hydrolysis, although it seems simpler to do an acid-catalyzed hydrolysis. But anyway, we need to hydrolyze this into a carboxylic acid, and then it will be a beta-carbonyl carboxylic acid, so then with heat it will decarboxylate. So this is what we just reviewed how to do. And how do we make this in the first place? Well, we can make this with a Clayson condensation. When one ester attacks another ester, you get an ester and a ketone. Right. But there's something more interesting we can do. Before we blast off this ester group, we can add extra alkyl groups to this carbon over here. 
this is what we could call the alpha carbon, right? So something we haven't talked about yet is we can also add extra alkyl groups to this alpha carbon. So we want to learn how to add extra alkyl groups to the alpha carbon and then blast off the ester group.